Hey everybody, now you're probably thinking, gee, I see the back of your head and all your gray hair and balding spot in your hat, and I see your face, but I can't see your screen. What's going on? Why can't I see what you're doing? This is egregious. I'm down liking this or thumbing down this or something or complaining or whatever. Well, I'm working on some stuff that you can't see the screen on. You can hear what I'm doing, but you can't actually see what I'm doing for um, NDR reasons. My wife is getting wood and interrupting stuff. That's okay. Nothing. Just talking to people on the internet. So, anyways. Uh, yeah. So, you, can, you know, I'll let you hear what I'm doing, but you can't quite see what I'm doing, unfortunately. Sorry. Not sorry. I don't know. But I'm working on some synth sounds. As you can tell, this is super loud. Uh, let's see, where is my VMMT? VUMT Deluxe. I know, like, this is, like, the, um, the, like, part about working on sound packs and samples that people don't tell you about is the, uh, the sexiness of hearing a, the same sound a million times as you tweak it to make it sound even better. Or something. Decimator two. Another thing I'm going to do with this here is, I think I'm going to duplicate you. I'm going to be able to turn you into a, a more of a one-shot kind of hit here. Turn this off. Sorry, laughing at something on, on the book face here. But. Yeah, dog. Yeah. All right. On to the next sound.
nice if I could show you what I was doing, but it's just one of those things, unfortunately. It's kind of, you don't see Dead Mouse's screen at all, right? You just see his face in his studio. So, I mean, it's kind of like that, I guess. I mean, I'm not as cool as Dead Mouse, and I'm just like making annoying sounds. But, that's how this goes sometimes. taking so you know, I made a bunch of these sounds and now I'm going through and like making them kind of fit the overall vibe of this particular pack I'm working on that's what I'm doing and you want people to be able to affect these a little bit but you also want them to have their own flavor that's basically what I'm doing here Sometimes I do it in different ways. Like this here, I'm using, you can't see, but I'm using two different filters instead of like an EQ8 or something like that. Because it just adds a different vibe to it. So. like it like that but we'll see on to the next sound oh wife is not gonna like that with the door being open because my dog decided to go into the other room he doesn't like it sometimes when i'm working on samples i tend to do it kind of loud sometimes because YOLO and things, and things. use a slight bit of reverb on it. I think. I think so. Now you may be thinking, if you're working on samples, why are you adding sounds, like, uh, effects to the sample? Isn't that, like... That one second, I gotta do some work. Alright. So, I'm back. And so I was talking a lot. And I realized I wasn't recording. So you guys missed out on some good conversation. Uh, so sorry about that, I guess. Anyways, really the biggest thing that I was talking about was... Why would anybody use a sample pack? Sample pack's cheating. Really, it's not. Like, if you were to take a loop pack or a construction kit and just... Don't touch anything other than, like, slight EQing and then released it... Yeah, I could I could get on board with that. It's cheating. But if you're using one shots on like a Digitac or uh, the model sample or something along those lines, my dog is ridiculous. Um that's not really cheating. Cause you're gonna alter that, you're gonna change it around, you're gonna make it your own. And there's really there's nothing wrong with doing that. Like that's perfectly fine. 
It's all about making it yours. You know, people don't... You didn't invent the sound of the flute. You didn't invent the note you're playing. So technically, that'd be cheating because that's a pre-made sound. Like, it's made to make specific sounds. And you're just playing notes through it, so... I mean, why don't people get on board with that? They're Yeah, they have to learn how to make it. Like, use the t instrument. You know, blow air through it the proper way and have proper breathing and stuff like that. Sure. But... Electronic music was like based on sampling. So I don't see anything wrong when people are using samples. They're using one shots or something like that. For me, sometimes it just helps me get ideas out or be like, oh, that's a cool sound. Let me play with that a little bit. Or, oh, this is pretty inspiring. Or, oh, I, you know, I really like that shaker sound. I'm not going to sit here and make my own shaker. And I have tambourines and shakers laying around that I use for making samples, but... I don't always use them when I'm making a track. That's another thing that's kind of funny is that people are like... People are always okay with using like drum samples, but when it comes to synths, you have to make your own. So, I know there's tools where, you know, like, Punchbox and the Max for Live synths and stuff here, regular synths to make kicks and stuff like that, but come on now. How many of you out there, like, honestly, honestly, not like, oh, I'm going to say I do, but I'm kind of secretly using blah, blah, blah. I mean, I use them sometimes, but nine times out of ten, I'm using sample. Probably a sample that I made, one of my packs or something, but... It's just quicker to use a sample when it comes to drums. We all do it. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with using them for other stuff as well. So, if anyone's ever given you garbage for using a sample, that you manipulated, or even if it was just a one shot like this, like there's not much you can do with this. It's literally just like a chord hit on a keyboard, like bah. right. So you're gonna use this, add a little delay, reverb, move some filter, you know, whatever. But if someone gave you crap because you use this, like you don't need them in your production life. Like they're just gonna drag you down. If it sounds cool, and you made it something unique. That's all that matters. Sometimes people get lost in the details. There's just, there's too much cool stuff out there to be bogged down with garbageness. And yeah, it's just, I don't know. I talked a lot about it and I'm trying to repeat and remember what I said. And I honestly don't remember anymore. I'm going to try something fun here. I don't really like the slight digital monster sometimes. And do something I normally don't do here. fine line between yummy distortion and just hurting yourself. What's going on here? I 
That is a weird bug. Um, all right, Ableton, that's, um, funny. There we go. Uh, well, see, I've been using Ableton for a long time and I just learned something new that I did not know you could do. I wonder if there's a way to like have it do it opposite. But if you hold control and click two of the EQ dots, you can select more than one at one time and have it do stuff. Both of them change at the same time. Never knew you could do that, but it's probably because I didn't read the manual fully for Ableton. Although I don't think I've ever seen anyone ever do that in a video either of all the stuff I've watched on Ableton. So, I guess there's that. I'm gonna cut this down. Doesn't need that much tail on it, I don't think. My Ukrainian friend sending me. Nothing here. Very strange. Whatever. The sound is deleted for some reason. Asking me if he, I saw his. Don't worry, kids. We'll fix that. Got a bit of low into it, doesn't it? Good techno sound right there. Boom chip, boom chip, boom chip, boom chip, boom chip, boom chip, boom chip. Yeah, that'd be pretty dope, huh? As you can tell, I'm not a very good beatboxer. I'm gonna cut the bass out of that a little bit. saturation to that. Really thicken that guy up. On to the next sound. So, it is Friday for me. Don't know what day this will be when you're watching it because this could be five years from now when you're watching this, and I could have given up on YouTube altogether, or I could be a super famous person. Probably not that. Probably very far from being super famous when you're watching this in the future. More than likely. But that's okay. that's okay. You know, we're not all meant to be famous. And as much as I'd like to be, I just, I don't want to sacrifice seeing my family to be able to put the time and effort I would need to do it. Because it takes a lot of 
takes a lot of time and dedication and honestly with two kids and a wife and mortgage and every other thing that's out there sometimes you just can't you can't make that happen because really to make it music it has to be your life if you're young it's awesome easy to, it's not easy but it's easier to be able to find the time to do it you can still live at home potentially not as many expenses you can go out more less responsibilities you know there's Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff you could be doing. Make your life a little easier. Well, let's see, what else do we got in here that could be fun to add to this? Maybe put some air in here. All right. I need to find myself as a nice, and I feel like Fab Filter has this probably. We got nice multi band. bit crusher where I could take a sp specific frequency range and just bit crush that range and again I'm sure you'll tell me that it's fab filters like Saturn does that which I think it does anyways that's fine I do not have that. If you want to buy that for me, I'd be okay with that. I think that's a cool sound. I'm going to shorten this up, though. What is with these uh, going on here? I skipped a few things. All right. Almost done with these. Three more to do, two more to do. So the way I do this is I go through and make a bunch of sounds for like a month or two or whatever. And then I kind of just grab them at random kind of sometimes, sometimes not. But I'll grab some sounds. And it depends on who I'm making the pack for, how big of a pack I want, but X number of sounds. And then I'm like, okay, this pack is going to have, like, it's going to be a techno pack. This one's going to be a techno pack. So I kind of want to make the sounds to fit inside of, like a hard techno or warehouse techno or like a left field kind of techno sound. So they're not going to be like just typical bits. They're just going to be some cool sounds. And then I'll add some effects on them to kind of bring them together, give them some cohesiveness into the pack. And then once I do that, I organize them all together. And then I may do like a version that's gone through the heat 
Or they'll all just go through the key and that'll be part of it. Or record them all to tape. Bring them back and layer them with the original ones. Or just have tape ver tape super tape saturated ones and non-tape saturated ones. So you can choose between which version you want for the sound you're going for. Some people like that, some people don't. You know, some people just want want it to be like completely dry, no added stuff on them, and that's fine. Like, I'm not gonna hate on you for that. Other people like other stuff, but the key is to come up with interesting sounds that kind of all are different, but the same, and they're usable. I tend to do a lot of really saturated and kind of distorted kind of stuff. But you can do some cool stuff with it. Sounds like my daughter is awake in the other room. Luckily, I got almost done with these sounds. I think my daughter realized that I'm home. But she's about to run out here, so get ready for that. Oh my gosh, you got me! Oh, and Flynn's awake too! Everyone's awake! Daddy! What? Thank you. Yeah, my kids are awake, so that means I gotta be done doing this here soon. That's okay. So, and another thing, fun thing is like, so Ableton has uh, the drum bus, right? Sometimes it's fun to add to other sounds. Like, this is a really distorted sound. experimentation experimenting is your key this has got a lot of low in it too and techno sounds always have a lot of low in them I'm just gonna lower it because someone can cut it out or you want to add more to it but it's got a nice boom to it but I'm just gonna lower it a little bit and then someone can bring it back later if they want I'm not going to hate on that. All right. Last. Last sound here. And then I got to go and go to the dog vet, get some stuff from my dog. And then uh, get some dinner. Uh, my son is not happy that the wife just left the room. Those of you with kids completely understand that. Let's see. I kind of like this the way it is. I'm just going to put some EQ on it. Kind of bring out the, the sounds I, I want. Add in. Slate Digital's air is, it does what it says. Like, you need some more air in a sound, this is the way to go. I dig it. Save this. All right. Well, thanks for watching. If you watch this, not, whatever. Uh, hopefully you don't mind not seeing the screen while I'm working on samples, but unfortunately I just can't show you what I'm doing uh, while I'm doing this. So, sorry, not sorry, whatever. You can down, thumbs down the video if you don't like it, thumbs up if you like it. This, these videos are more about the conversation as I'm working, trying to talk to you. I guess it'd make better for a live stream, but I don't want my live streams to be random and whatnot. And, and there's a lot of interruptions. There'll probably be a few cuts, and it's like I'll have to manually edit this because there's like three times I had to actually stop it to recording. But, anyways, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Thumbs up, subscribe, buy my sample packs, buy my music. Helps me, helps the channel. Subscribe to my Patreon if you want me to be able to do more of this so I don't have to work as much. 
So yeah, thanks for watching. Later.